Good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, taking the time to, to come on and chat and pass on valuable experiences. And that's where uh, Martin and I started discussing a few weeks ago about the transitions, you know, from players to coaches, coaches to business, as Bernard and I have touched on, and, and also coaching um, to coaching, really going from different jobs uh, and the importance of learning and preparing during those periods, you know. So, I think it'll be a good discussion. Monday was great, and I think there's a lot of people on here with you know amazing experiences, and hopefully the learning can help uh, you know help everybody on the call and you know the other people that uh, that will tune into the YouTube and, and other <coughs> sessions moving forward. So Sam, oh, yeah, so I'm Sam Walton, former international rugby player, also finished playing in 2018, and since then um, my work has been a mixture of a bit of television work, a bit of public speaking. Recently, some coaching and um, some of my own business interests as well. Sam, I'm going to come to you because obviously for you, you're probably the, the, the youngster of the group in terms of transition. How's it been for you? Uh, I, I had some pretty good advice as I was playing. Because um, there's guys, I think now they're much better at doing, uh, which, which Carl will know being at the Ospreys now with the WRPA, they're much more proactive in getting players to do things. Life after rugby, but with, when I was playing, which wasn't obviously long ago, but I remember in my younger days, a couple of people might come in and speak every other year and say the importance of it, but it wasn't actually backed up with anything. But I had pretty good advice from um, when I was 19, 20 years of age. I still use the same, for example, financial advisor now that I did then, who was just my dad's good friend, who he trusted. I use people I trust, which is the most important thing. Um, just getting like a, a private pension or an ISA, just simple things in place, which you see a lot of young kids blowing money on watches and nice leases on cars and they've got their priorities completely wrong you know so um it might be a bit boring but like a lot of young players are like live fast die young i'm me and reese patch always used to say live slow die old that was my <laughs> that was my motto when it comes to financial planning um and then i through my career um when i was whenever i played for wales then i would always invest my money into property i was really keen on property and luckily i had uh, peter thomas at the blues who was chairman at the time who was um who runs atlantic um, a, a big property firm so I'd always pick his pick his brains on property investments I've done property investment throughout my career so then when it came to a point where I wanted to retire I, I wanted to be in a position I could retire when I wanted to so um, I did have a little bit of a, a wobble and a panic I remember speaking to my agent I, I've got nothing like, if I actually finish tomorrow I've got I've got nothing apart from the small investments that I've made um, and a lot of handshake deals but nothing concrete but I was very really lucky that through my career because I was interested in media I peppered myself with some uh, media prep and I put myself out there to do some live TV to see what it was like. Um, same with when it came to public speaking. And I had a couple of uh, business interests which I was keen on pursuing. So I sort of tried to upskill myself in those and read up on that. Um, so yeah, being I found being a rugby player tough because you've got to be a rugby player. And then when you're in a leadership role, you've got all the captaincy responsibilities that come with it. Then you've got planning for life after rugby. And then you've got a family. It's tough, but now it's paying dividends because in, in two years' time now, I feel really settled and happy. Um, I haven't had a single day since I've retired where I wished I was still playing. You know, I was definitely ready to, to finish. And, and the coaching was completely left field. I, I haven't even planned to do any coaching. So that was something which came completely out of the blue, uh, but something that I'm really enjoying. So I think being proactive in my playing days and trying to plant seeds for life after rugby, now I look back and it's such a boring bit of advice to give youngsters. Um, but I look back now and I'm so thankful that I did that. Yeah, I do think it's, you're right. It's the players who aren't your first teamers. Um, I'm not sure because I won't, I won't mention salaries, but you know, we know there's a band of salaries of international players who are on a, a healthy salary and it's your guys who are your second, third choice players. It's key for them who uh, they need to plan. Because I remember I read a stat saying 75% um, of rugby players uh, ended depression, some form of depression, whether it's mild or or severe, when they finish playing. But I remember thinking, well, I, I was, I think I entered that when I was playing, so I found it so stressful towards the end of my career. But I think that's because, and I appreciate, I was one of the lucky ones who had an international career. Um, so you are financially better off. It's the guys who are, which is the bulk of the professional rugby players out there who don't play international rugby, who are in in 40, 50, 60, 70,000, which is a great wage in the real world but not when you're earning it for just five, six years and then you're back out into the real world with no job. You've got to upskill yourself early. So I'm obviously still in contact with a lot of players. It's great to see guys now 
loads of new startup businesses planting seeds for life after rugby whether it's um anything in nutrition or they want to become a pt or they want to do property development or they become a financial advisor it's great to see them doing things now proactively when they're 23 24 25 so when that time does come you can just flick that switch turn off being a rugby player enjoy a little bit of time at home and and reflect on that and then move into the real brilliant phil did you want to yeah, it was the, one of the points Sam, you know, Sam made is getting your priorities right, and that was again leading on <laughs> from something that Tim uh, mentioned on Mondays. Obviously, as you go along with your career, you know, playing and coaching, your responsibilities change, and then obviously the you know the, the things that you have to provide for your family changes. Obviously, and I think that's a really good way of looking at it, Sam, is making sure you get your priorities right and having those conversations with the players. Um, you know, to make them understand that down the line things are going to be different, <clears throat> excuse me, are potentially going to be different because of these reasons and putting them into those positions there where they can plan accordingly so that they don't maybe get into that stressful situation. There's going to be a natural level of stress, I'm sure, uh, as we all know, but I think making sure they understand that priorities will change, you know, as responsibilities, as more responsibilities come on them. And I think that's a really important point, actually. It's like playing a game of rugby, though, and, and we all coach it when you play rugby. When you play a game of rugby, you've got to go out and make it happen. You can't just go out and play a game and expect to score a try in the first 10 minutes without putting an effort or putting yourself out there or taking risks. And it's exactly the same as life after rugby. You know, it's not just going to fall into your lap. You've got to go out and make something happen. So I was on a phone call today with um, with somebody who is um, a business partner I'm with now and it's just a small venture that we've got. And there's like lots of little opportunities coming up and I'm like, it might only be a five, 10 minute phone call if somebody's made a request, but make that phone call. Nine times out of 10, it might not come to anything, but the one time out of 10 that you did pick up the phone, it might come to something. So you've got to make something happen. You can't just expect it to happen. Same as playing a game of rugby, same as life after rugby as well. Yeah. 